Okay, well, this week we're going to do uh, subtractive synthesis uh, with Audacity and Zen. And uh, we're going to build sounds from the ground up. And I don't know if it's uh, terribly obvious, but on all these sessions, the music that you hear on this intro and outro uh, to the session is generally uh, music we've made using the concept involved. So this time, uh, the music uh, for the intro and the outro are uh, sounds we've created using subtractive synthesis. And uh, otherwise, uh, let's get started. Okay, well, if you recall, we have a few times looked at a straight uh, sine wave. And we'll do that again briefly. And that sounds like a tone, but it doesn't exactly sound musical. So what we're going to look at at subtractive synthesis is to take... Uh, uh, an oscillator and carve out the sounds that we'd, we'd like. So we'll come in here and we're going to generate noise. And we'll generate white noise, uh, half a second of it. Whoops, that's not, a, yeah, that's half a second. And we will come down here and carve a very narrow notch uh, around 220. And we'll only make the notch 6 hertz, so uh, 217 to 223. And now this thing, I want to call your attention to it because you see it in a lot of filters. If you remember from our filter thing, uh, 6 decibels is kind of a standard. That's what uh, 6 decibels per octave. So uh, at 220, it's going to be uh, straight uh, the sound we're coming out at uh, by the time you, we have a frequency of 440 hertz, uh, it's going to roll off a, a, an octave or a, a six decibels. And you can actually what you see here is uh, you can run it through this filter 10 times, and that's going to be you know at 440 the first time through it, it carves it down six, and the second time through 12, and the third, and so on and on and on. So that uh, by the time we get here, we've rolled that thing off 60 decibels. So this is a very, very steep filter in terms of the pictures, if you remember, and it's also a very narrow filter. And we'll do that, and as you can see, it really cut that down, so we'll go and increase the gain on it with normalize, and let's uh, we'll normalize that to say minus two, and there is our frequency. Let's, let's uh, zoom in. And if we listen to that, Sounds a little more musical. So let's do that again. And let's uh, generate noise. And come in here and run a bandpass filter over it again. And we'll give it the first in the harmonic series, the first partial. And one of the things that I see and uh, people saying, and, and I believe it, is that as the partials go up, as you go up in the harmonic series, uh, the actual bandwidth increases on, on musical sound of things, so that if we've doubled the, the frequency, then we're going to double the bandwidth and make this 12. And let's, uh, let's make it not quite so steep. And again, we'll bring that up and usually but not always the partials are uh, a bit quieter than uh, the fundamental frequency and if I listen to that solo and now let's listen to them together and it's it's starting to sound well to me a little a little more musical and certainly more musical than that uh, sine wave by itself so let's uh, let's do that one more time and carve out our filter and we'll go for 660 and 3 times 6 is 18 and we'll 
make that a little wider and again bring up the gain and it, it more and more as as we stack on these parcels we begin to change the the tone of this and begin to approach something that's reasonably musical uh something that sounds maybe a little more pleasant to our ears now let's uh let's just for the heck of it come down here and make this minus six so that the higher partial is quite a bit smaller okay and we can keep doing that and add non-partials and add non-partials we can mute this one and you see how that sounds there is no second there's only the fundamental and the third and play with it that way uh, and we could go on and stack these partials up and in fact i did that uh, before the session and let's look at that in sonic visualizer that i hope looks familiar to you from recent weeks and here's here is five i did you know the fundamental times two times three times four times five and if i can yeah there we go uh so just like we oops i went a little too far there we go okay so there you can see our 220 440 330 uh 660 etc cetera, etc cetera. now the thing i want you to notice is notice how even though i only put in five one two three four five you can see how they combined on their own and made you know even higher partials and if we look at the wave really closely you'll notice that while yeah yes while these waves are similar they're not identical and and that's important because when we have that sine wave uh every single wave every single peak uh was exactly like the one before and we call that a periodic wave we call these quasi periodic they're very very close to each other as you can see the the same kind of shapes repeated over and over but because we're running that white noise through here and uh a completely random thing uh they're similar but not identical quasi periodic and and we notice that real musical instruments because maybe they were vibrating before maybe you moved it over uh, a millimeter maybe you struck it uh, string a little less strong maybe you breathed a little hard for whatever reason environmental reasons uh, uh, reasons to do with the instrument itself uh, musical instruments make quasi periodic waves so as we as we do this subtractive synthesis and carve out these things, taking a completely random input of the white noise, then we begin to see that the tones we're generating are, are quasi-periodic and therefore maybe not as pleasant, not all quasi-periodic things are pleasant, but certainly sound a little more organic, a little more natural than uh, uh, a pulse wave, just a just a sine wave created over and over. It sounds too cold to our ear, too regular. Uh, so these things, uh, this is how this works. So well, let's close this out and let's go into Zen, into the subsynth module, and see how that uh, how how we can do that within a, a synthesizer. Okay, well here's Zen, and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is erase all things completely clean this out so you don't think i'm cheating anywhere because i would not have you uh think that about me uh i'm a lot of things but a, a cheater hopefully isn't one of them unless i announce it in advance uh, so let's go make an instrument uh hopefully these these first steps are familiar to you we'll take out add synth we're gonna only subtractive synth this time and here is that window uh, this is the fundamental and how loud it is what we did just a minute ago with normalize this is the width of the notch and if i were to oh, let's come into here and bring up their virtual keyboard okay and so that's uh, uh, similar to what we saw before with 
uh, play whatever the key is and uh, bring in white noise and put a very, very narrow bandpass filter on it and uh, just play that tone. So much like we did a second ago, we'll bring up uh, the first uh, in the harmonic series, the, the partial. And we'll bring those up. And this is how wide that filter actually is. So we'll bring it up a little bit. Bring this one up a little bit more. And... And hopefully that sounds a little bit to you like uh, what we were doing just a minute ago. I mean, the, the tone's different. I don't know where a 220 is on here, but... And in this way, what we're really doing is we're saying bring in white noise, uh, notch out uh, this particular frequency, uh, the fundamental, the first har or first partial, second partial, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And leave, you see here, there's no higher partials. Uh, but we could throw a few in and maybe make those a little wider. And now, now up here, it's getting so wide, you can actually hear some of that white noise coming in, hear that kind of hiss in there. And so maybe we've gone a little too far. Maybe we want to... Uh, and you'll notice by bringing down the width of the filter we bring down the hiss uh, so this is this is zen and this is subtractive synthesis bring in white noise uh, notch out everything that you don't want and and play it and so let's uh let's try something else here one thing that's uh, kind of uh, common uh, in in some sounds is to have I mean, if you think about a bell, you strike the bell, you get one tone, but kind of underneath it is this pulsing. So let's let's try to, uh, which which is a subharmonic, which is almost like saying uh, this is the main frequency, and underneath is this this pulsing thing. That you see after it's rolled off a bit. So let's try that. Okay, so this is subtractive synthesis. Uh, we can, uh, he's added on a bunch of things here that are very common in synthesizers uh, that we can play with. Let's, uh, let's come here and tweak the frequency envelope. And we can put on a filter over the whole tone and do whatever we want with that. Much like you're probably... So let's notch that up. Okay, and let's uh, let's make that a high pass. Where it's only passing the hires, and I I hope from our filters thing, uh, low pass, high pass, whatever's uh, familiar to you. Here's a band pass. And let's uh, cut down the attack on that. Okay, so so you see how this works. Uh, and, and that's pretty much all there is to it. The subtractive synth module in Zen is pretty simple. You simply put, bring in white noise, carve out the parcels you don't want. Make your tone. And. play around so that's 
that's it. Uh, pretty much all there is to it here. Oh, by the way, here's filter stages like we just saw in the last one. How many times you want to pass it through? Uh, randomly, where's the filter start? Uh, all kinds of things here to play with in subtracted synth. And as you see, you don't need to uh, stack up your waves in additive synthesis. This this is stacking up waves by bringing in white noise, uh, running each each uh, piece of white noise through its own separate bandpass filter, and you know the resulting output. Uh, begins to sound reasonably musical, reasonably organic, depending on on, uh, on what you've chosen. Like I said, not all choices are necessarily good. Uh, we can come down here and I'll bring just the odd ones way up. And it sounds maybe less musical than regular instruments, but still sounds, you know, it's not noise, uh, even though noise was brought into here. So that's it. I hope uh, the subtractive synthesis, you learn something. Uh, like anything, you can run these through various uh, sound effects, system effects, anything like that in Zen you want to. But that's subtractive synthesis from the ground up. Bring in white noise, uh, notch it out, uh, the width of the notch, generally dependent upon uh, the, what partial it is uh, the fundamental very very narrow notch uh, as you go up in frequency uh, go up in in the harmonic series uh, that notch gets a little wider and wider and typically in in instruments uh, that in in most instruments that notch uh, gets gets uh, quieter and quieter that that you're bringing in uh, bells like i say just for kind of an add-on bells always have a sub a sub uh, harmonic so if the main frequency is 220 uh, you're going to get something out of a bell at 110 uh, and that and that's it uh, and i'll see you i'll see you next week okay well that's it uh, you might remember uh, way back when we said uh, synthesis uh, originally was subtractive synthesis, additive synthesis. This was subtractive synthesis from the from the ground up. Uh, I hope you learned something. As always, if your stuff doesn't act like my stuff, check the versions. And otherwise, you know, I mean, same old thing. Uh, go to the websites, uh, check out the docs, uh, roll up your sleeves, uh, just throw in some sounds, uh, play around. No nothing. Nothing I can tell you will do nearly as well as you uh, bringing up some of this software and just poking around trying to do different things. So that's it, and we'll see you. We'll see you next week.